Folks, in the last video we talked about the purpose of combustion. And we said combustion was taking any type of organic molecule. It doesn't really matter what it is, if it's carbon-based, and if it's non-volatile, or even if it's really volatile. It's going to combust using the proper reaction. So if we can mix a little bit of O2 to that organic, and we put a little bit of heat with that organic, we can produce two products only, and those products will always be, always be CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. And we said that this reaction is really the basis of the TOC instrument. This is how it works. This is what's going on on the inside of the TOC instrument, and our detector is made to look at the amount of CO2 that is produced from the sample. So I told you in this lecture video we would start discussing the pieces and parts, right? What are the pieces? What are the parts that make this thing work? And I mentioned that we're going to talk about the major pieces first, and then we'll go back and we'll fine-tune it all up, and we'll talk about the little bitty individual pieces inside of the machine that maybe makes this process happen a little bit better and a little bit quicker. So the first one that we're going to talk about is going to concern the auto sampler. And before I talk about the auto sampler, uh, I just really want to briefly mention, if I go back to the combustion reaction, we see CO2 is a required part of that, right? So with every TOC instrument that you're going to see, you're going to see these tanks probably located somewhere nearby, all right? If they're not nearby, then it is a line that leads to the TOC instrument. So we need to discuss what these tanks are and what, are, what tanks are required for the TOC to work. Uh, here in the picture, you see three different ones. Now, all three of these are not going to be a requirement of the TOC. The only thing that is required of the TOC is air. And the question is, why air? Well, air is the only thing that's needed for the TOC instrument because part of air is going to be O2, and O2 is going to be required for the combustion. Now, air is not just O2 only, all right? Air is going to be a mixture of different gases. Nitrogen is actually one of the largest um, mixtures that are components that are inside of air, but O2 is a component, and O2 does go into the instrument, and O2 is used for the combustion process. Uh, air is uh, not as explosive as an oxygen tank. Air is also a little bit cheaper than an oxygen tank, and because of that reason, air is the go-to tank for my TOC analyzer. Uh, what you see in the picture here, uh, if you've taken our safety course before, uh, this is just going to be a requirement of really any type of laboratory when you have tanks that are sitting out like this. And this is basically an area where they can chain the tanks up to. So all of those are going to be required. You need to make sure that these tanks are stable, that they can't just simply turn over and fall to the ground and maybe explode on you or someone else that's working there. So we really do have to chain them down and it's not because they're going to grow legs and get up and walk away it's just simply because we don't want them to turn over any kind of accident can happen in a lab and that's one of the ones that we can prevent just with a simple chain onto the wall and that's it uh, if you don't have the railing like this on the wall uh, sometimes these people will order clamps and the clamps will go onto the table and that clamp will also chain around and you can secure tanks that way as well so it really just depends on the location it depends on the laboratory and it depends on how much room that you've got that's uh, going to be there so what you're seeing in the picture are three different tanks. Uh, these tanks are probably going to other pieces of equipment, not just to a TOC, but maybe uh, other pieces of equipment that's located within that room as well, especially down this wall uh, in this particular lab. Every time we order air, an air tank, uh, the air tank normally costs us around 140 bucks. Uh, do I want you to memorize that total? The answer is no. I'm never really going to ask you to regurgitate a price tag because these things can change quite honestly from year to year. But it gives you an idea of the money that becomes involved in just operating just one TOC instrument and that's it. So I think sometimes dollars make sense. And uh, if we can uh, put a price tag onto some of these pieces, I think it will help you appreciate it a little bit.
bit more. The tanks are also leased, so we lease the tanks. We do not own them, and those tanks are leased for every year, so we normally pay for 12 months at a time. Uh, the leases on the tanks go anywhere, you know, around 5 to $7 a month, so they're not extremely bad, but it is something that we do not own. And when we have to get a refill, what happens is that they just don't bring a tank of air in and plug it into the top of this and fill it up like a gas tank for your vehicle, right? What happens is that they'll bring us a new tank altogether. So they'll take the old tank away, they'll bring us a new tank, they'll chain it up for us, and then off we go. Uh, on the top of each one of these tanks, you're seeing a valve, right? And this valve is pretty important. Uh, this is going to be called a regulator. And a regulator will serve two purposes. So we need to talk about what the purpose of that regulator is, right? Uh, why, why do I see two meters on those? I see a meter here to the left and a meter there to the right, and maybe some type of control knob uh, that's here on the very front. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But that is the uh, kind of idea of an air tank, and air is a requirement of the TOC. And I also want to say that if you are not using the TOC, make sure that you turn the tank off at the nozzle, right? So there's the nozzle for that tank, there's the nozzle for that tank, and there's the nozzle for that tank. Do not mess with these front nozzles that's on the front of the regulators. That is to uh, do a completely different purpose, but if you want the air on or off, you're going to go to the main valve of the tank, and that's where you turn it on and off at. All right, It's very important that you do that, so that way you are not messing with the regulator and you're not messing with uh, the flow that comes out of that tank that goes into that machine. So 140 bucks. It normally will last us a couple of months uh, if we are running it like we should run it, right? Uh, the problem here is that we just don't run it every day. We're not running it every week. We only really run it when we need to run it, and that's typically a couple of months out of a year, and that's about it. So we normally get a refill on our air once a year. Uh, even if we need it at that point. So uh, our usage of the TOC instrument is just not very heavy. But if I was working for an analytical laboratory somewhere where I would have to constantly measure the TOC content of whatever samples that we were measuring, this air tank maybe could last us for maybe a week before we would have to get another refill or a backup, switch it over, right? The regulators on top of these tanks, uh, here's a picture of the regulator. I mentioned two valves, right? Two valves here are going to be very important. Uh, one valve, and it really just depends on how that regulator is made, will be the fill tank, all right? It will tell you basically how much air or how much gas is inside of that tank. Uh, it's just very similar to the gas tank on your vehicle. You look down to see if you have enough gas to get you from your home to your school and back, right? Uh, so one is the fill side, while the other one is a PSI or a pressure side, pressure per square inch. And that PSI is going to control the flow that goes from the tank to the machine, all right? So flow that goes from the tank to the TOC instrument. That is the purpose of the regulator. Okay, so for instance, if I go back to this gas tank and I turn this gas tank wide open and I do not have a regulator there, this gas will go through the line into my instrument and there's nothing to control the flow. So I could overload the instrument and basically bust the insides out. All right, I don't want, want that to happen. Another thing that can also happen is that this tank, if I turn it on and I have no regulator, there's nothing to regulate the flow that comes out. It's very important to have a constant flow of any type of gas that comes out of a tank. And I need a controller in order to do that. And that is the purpose of the regulator. It is the controller that controls the flow and keeps it steady going into my instrument. That flow is controlled using the big main valve here in the very front. 
So literally what happens is that one direction it increases, that's typically to the right-hand side, and one direction it decreases, that's to the left-hand side most of the time. So if I turn my air tank on and I look at the flow, how fast it goes through the regulator and out, then I have control of the speed of that flow. So I can decrease it or I can increase it as needed. On the instrument, they're going to tell you 200 about for a TOC instrument. So I want to make sure that I turn my instrument on, I turn the tank on, there is a meter on the inside of that instrument, and it will pop me out a number. So if I look at that meter on my TOC software and I see 180, then I know I'm a little bit low. So what I'll do is I'll go to the regulator, I'll slightly increase it just a little bit, I keep my eye on the computer screen, and this number will go up, 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 until maybe I get to that magic number for my Shimatsu, which is going to be 200, give or take, um, I think it's plus or minus 10. So it's okay with 190 to 210. There is the magic sweet spot for the air intake of my machine. All right. Uh, over time, what will happen is that my tank will get empty. And I'll know that by looking at one of the valves, right? Uh, again, that depends on what kind of regulator that you have. But uh, one of these valves will be the fill line. And that fill line will basically let me know how much is left over. Well, over time, as that meter goes down, 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 there is also a chance that my flow rate begins to plummet because I'm getting an empty tank. And this 200 will begin to plummet and go lower and lower and lower and lower. So there is a chance that I'll turn my air tank on and I'll look at my flow intake on the machine. I'll see that it's not anywhere close to 200. The machine knows that as well and it will kick back an error. Uh, that error well, there's either a problem with the regulator, which is there, or there's going to be a problem with how much is in my tank. So that could be a sign I need to order a new tank and bring it in, and there we go. All right? Sorry, I think I had problems with my audio. So these regulators, uh, they're normally going to cost us around six to seven hundred dollars a piece. So these things are not very cheap. Uh, but the good news is that once you get one, they typically will last you for a very long time, unless you just really damage it or mishandle it, one or the other. All right. Uh, so here again is another picture of the TOC that we're talking about. The TOC instrument is over here to the left hand side. That's the actual box that's doing the job. The piece here in the center. This is my auto injector or my auto sampler. Well, I will load my samples up and let it inject it one by one. And of course, over here to the left or right hand side is my computer unit. So this thing does require software and it's computer driven. You can also get standalone models. The standalone models are going to have a keypad here in the front and that keypad will have a screen. So that way you don't necessarily need software in order to make this thing to work. Uh, but this is our instrument that we have in our lab exactly. So what we have is the TOCL from Shimatsu. And here we have the ASI or the auto injector unit. Uh, and then finally, our computer system is just a simple Dell with a uh, TOC software that's built in on the inside. All right. So that's all that I want to talk about in this video. In the next video, we'll talk more details about the auto injector. How does it do its job? And what are some pieces and components that can be replaced and can be fixed? Uh, so our first encounter here is our air tank. And that air tank is very special. We need this thing in order to work. So it's very important for me to keep an eye on how much is there and the flow that comes out of the tank and into my machine. Uh, something else that I want to leave you with is a log book. It's not uncommon for labs to have a log book on their tanks. And what would happen is that you would write your name into the sheet. And then you would write the date that you used the machine. And you would write down the fill, which is how much is there. And then you would write down the flow. So that way you can ensure that it is pumping in the right amount of gas every time. Uh, this allows a laboratory to keep track 
uh, of who's using the machine, if they left it on, if something happened during their analysis rung and they sprung a leak, or something that was going on that wasn't quite legitimate. It also allows a laboratory to keep track of how much is in their gas tank, so that way they can order a replacement before it gets too late. So with that said, in the next video, we'll talk about the next step, and that is my actual auto injector at this point.